You ready? We're just going to now look at some neat situations. Now that we have cosmic potential energy, what can we figure out? Here's the first question. It says this. A mass little m rocket, let's call it the rocket, is moved from the surface of a planet to a distance r, big R, from the planet's center. Which of the following is true about the work done? A, B, C, D, or E? Hmm. Hmm. Which one of those is correct? Well, they want us to figure out the amount of work done. It's the change in potential plus the change in kinetic. I know I have to go with that one because, Lena, we are cosmic here. So I can't go... I can't go work equals force times distance. That's a no-go. In fact, you know what? That's what they've done in A, I think. They've said it's the force of gravity times big R. That's not what it is. We're going to make another assumption. We're going to assume that VI is zero and VF is zero. We're going to assume that the change in kinetic is what? Yeah. This is just asking how much actual fuel would you need to get it from the Earth to the top. But I don't want to talk about how fast we launch or how fast we're going at the end. I don't want to bring in any kinetic yet. I could if you gave me those numbers, add that in. But for now, I'm also going to say that. Mitra, what's changing anything? So this is going to be PE final minus PE initial. Don't write this next line down. Why would this be incorrect? Little g is changing. Yeah. So I can't use this one. I have to use the cosmic one. And the cosmic one, you can write this down, was negative big G, big M, little m, over. What's R final in this picture? I think it's capital R. Yes? Minus negative big G, big M, little m, over. And it looks like R initial is lowercase r. Oh, by the way, does the little m cancel here? So it canceled when we were figuring out orbital periods and velocities and radii. Once you're up there, the mass does cancel out. But to get there, it, it shouldn't cancel out. It should take way more rocket fuel to put a bigger satellite up there. That just makes sense to me. Um, I have a minus minus in the middle, which is a... What's the correct answer? Is B right? Don't think so. Which one somebody said? D? Sure. You may sometimes see this written because there is a GCF. Is there a big G in everything on the right hand side? Is there a big M? Is there a little M? Uh, you may sometimes see it written as uh, big G big M, little m, bracket, negative 1 over big R plus 1 over little r. I would, I find the amount of typing you save there, I can more than make up for it by backspacing and editing and, and being clever. So I never write it that way. But that is an equivalent expression. If this one here, sorry, no, if... Are any of these right? No, that's got an R squared. No good. No, no. Never mind. None of those can be right. Explain your answer. Right there. Let's talk about escape velocity. How many of you have ever heard the term escape velocity? Okay. What does escape velocity mean? It asks, how fast do you need to be going before you can shut your engines off and coast and you'll still leave the gravity field of the planet? How fast do you need to be going to escape the gravity of the planet? Escape velocity says this. So to escape from a planet's gravity means, in theory, to travel an infinite distance from the planet out to the edge of the universe. Sarah, in reality, it means to get far enough away from the planet so that the force of gravity is so infinitesimally small that it's negligible. So you don't need to go to the edge of the universe to pull this off. To barely escape, to barely escape means... You pull this off in such a way that just as you've left the planet's gravity, you've coasted to a stop. So you wasted no extra energy. 
Can we figure that out? Yeah. We can figure out escape velocity. This year, I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. I'm going to ask you escape velocity this year. How are we going to figure this out? There is a change in height. There is a change in speed. There's a yucky, curvy gravitational field. We're going to solve this using conservation of energy. You could probably figure out a way to do this using work, but since the question hasn't asked how much work, I'm going to start with conservation of energy. What's conservation of energy? P E initial plus K E initial equals P E final plus K E final. We're not going to use MGH. We're going to use the cosmic one. Kinetic energy is still a half mv squared. That's not going to change all year. Um, are any of these zero? Are any of these also zero? So what I end up with, which at first seems a little scary, but don't panic, is potential initial plus kinetic initial equals zero. Ah, nah, let's, let's commit to it. Let's expand on this. Potential energy initial, that's going to be negative big G, big M, little m over R initial, and I guess R initial is going to be how far you start from the center of the planet that you're leaving. You guys okay, please? Plus, what's kinetic energy been since physics 11? Not going to change. So this will be a half little m, because the satellite's moving, not the planet. Uh, v initial squared, that equals zero. You know, I think what I would do now I would plus that negative to that side that gets rid of the zero and it gets rid of a negative. So Mitra, if I do that, I get this. A half little m v initial squared equals positive big G big M little m over our initial. Oh, I knew I had some space for this. I have it here. Okay, well, we're doing it here. It'll fit. Oh, is the escape velocity for the space shuttle the same as the escape velocity for a tiny probe? Yeah. And let's get the V by itself. So now instead of V initial, I'm going to call it V esc, E S C, V escape. How would I get the V by itself? How would I move that one half over? Times by two, and that's going to give me a VI squared. This is really a clean equation. You can add this to your blue sheet if you want. It's not on your yellow sheet. I'll make you derive it for the test on your yellow sheet. But it turns out escape velocity is 2 big G big M over our initial square root. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you all look up for a second, wasn't... Oh, let's try that again, Mr. Do it. Just get rid of the 2. Wasn't that uh, orbital speed? So it's, it, oh, twice the orbital speed, and you're good. Kind of nice, just a lovely pattern. I mean, I'm not going to memorize that, but I always, you know, like it when we get a nice clean answer. So this is the equation for escape velocity. I guess you can memorize it if you want to. I always derive it by saying it's conservation of energy, and I want my final energy to be zero because I want to coast it to a stop, and... No gravity out there. And then I solve. So I wrote here, escape velocity asks how much work is necessary to bring potential energy to zero. We can solve for an escape velocity using conservation of energy. Turns out we just did that up here. Sorry, instead of right here. So, find the escape velocity for the Earth and for the Moon. You know what? I'm going to do A, the Earth, up here. V, escape, Earth going to be the square root of 2 big G big M over R 2 
six point six seven times ten to the negative eleven. Five point nine eight times ten to the twenty fourth, I think. And let's assume we're starting on the surface of the Earth. And in fact, we're going to assume we're launching from the North Pole on Superman's Fortress of Solitude, so we're starting at rest. 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. What is the escape velocity of the Earth? And don't forget to square root. I happen to have this one memorized because it's a fairly easy number to remember. I think it's 11,100 or something. It's very close to that. I know it's 111 something, 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 something. Double check me, but I'm pretty sure. And yes, once again, I'm going to insist that you all try these on your calculator for practice. Is it is it 11,200 or 11,100? Yeah, okay, so it's, I know it's three ones and then something. So 11,200 meters per second. Can we do that? We did that to go to the moon. We escaped the Earth's gravity. We coasted most of the way to the moon. In fact, all we did is we went close enough to the moon so that the moon's gravity was slightly bigger than the Earth's gravity, and we shut off our engines and let the moon pull us all the way in. Best way to do it. So, on that note, let's find the escape velocity for the moon. It's going to be the same equation to big G, big M over R. Please be very careful. Make sure you're giving me data for the moon. These ones I don't have memorized. 2, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Moon's mass. Moon's radius. And make sure you pick the radius of the moon, not its orbit. This one, it's going to be smaller. It's easier to leave the moon's gravity. And I think it's significantly smaller. Almost remembering, is it in like in the 3000s or something? 2420? Way slower. Is that right? <laughs> 20. What is it? Three. Sorry, say it again. 2370? I think that twigs the bell. Certainly way slower. I mean, ideally, if we do want to make space travel a common, ordinary thing, we've got to build a moon base and you launch from the moon. Way less fuel. If we can find some way to manufacture rocket fuel on the moon from the resources that are on the moon, water, hydrogen and oxygen, there's rocket fuel, there is water on the moon, we think. Um, that's the way to go. It's just getting all the infrastructure and everything in place. But kind of hoping that'll happen in your lifetime. Then again, it was supposed to happen in my lifetime because 10 days before I was born, we landed on the moon. We seem to have just gone backwards ever since. Neil deGrasse Tyson likes to say that if aliens came and they looked at our space program, the U.S. space program, the U.S. space program would make sense in reverse. Because right now, the U.S. can't send people into orbit on their own. They have to piggyback on the Russians. And seven years ago, we had the space shuttle, which could take people up but couldn't go anywhere. And 40 years ago, we were landing on the moon, which seems backwards to me. Pardon me? Be I, I told you, because Sputnik galvanized the nation. Why did Sputnik galvanize the nation? It, it was. It, it, the, the satellite was a nuclear missile case with a radio inside, but it was a nuclear missile case that got the country's attention and you had the government. Uh, at its height, I think NASA was taking up something like 4 or 5% of the budget. 
Right now, it's less than a half of a percent. So, okay. Um, it's possible to reach infinity and still be moving. So that equation would look like this. Potential initial plus kinetic initial equals potential final plus kinetic final. Uh, the potential final would still be zero because you're out at infinity. But if you're still moving, you'd have some leftover kinetic. And then it would be the same substitutions. Potential would be negative big G, big M, little m over R initial, a half M V initial squared, half M V final squared. A rocket blasts off from the Earth and barely escapes the Earth's gravity. I think that's code for escape velocity. With no additional engine use, how fast was the rocket moving at launch? Eric, what's this question asking me to find? Well, even more basic, how? So it's asking me to find a speed. Is there a change in height? Is there a change in speed? Now, I used to say, is there a yucky, curvy path? But now we're going broader. Is there a yucky, curvy change in gravitational force? That's a job for conservation of energy. And so I think we're going to end up with escape velocity, but I'm doing this the long way because if you blank, this is how we're going to do it. We would say, okay, kinetic initial plus potential initial equals kinetic final plus potential final. We would say barely escapes with no additional. I think what we mean is it goes to a stop. And if it's escaped from Earth's gravity, it no longer will fall. So how much potential energy does it have if it won't fall? Zero. And so this is how, again, we derived escape velocity. We said, OK, it's a half m v initial squared plus negative big G, big M, little m over our initial, that equaled zero. We said, okay, a half m v initial squared equals positive big G, big M, little m over our initial. And Eric, you are right. We're going to get the escape velocity equation again. Should be called escape speed, but in rocketry they always talk the same velocity. Okay. So we're going to get V equals the square root of 2 big G big M over R. How fast was it moving? I know the answer, 11,200 meters per second. So I probably won't ask you to find the escape velocity of the Earth. I'll probably make up a new planet or a different planet. I'll give you the mass and the radius and we can crunch it. What other types of situations can we look at? Okay. A rocket blasts off from the Earth and it enters into a circular orbit. Did I say orbit? 25,500 kilometers. Nice try. Can you multiply that by 1,000? Let's do our conversion. So 25,500 times a thousand. Two point five five times ten to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that right? And I think this is from the center, so it is a radius. I'm gonna make a little note here then R equals two point five five times ten to the seventh. In fact that's R orb. I don't have to add the Earth's radius to this one because it did tell me this was from the center of the planet. Okay. Cool. Lena, what's the first thing you want me to find? Did you say orbit? Gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. Pause. Lena, which version of A am I going to use for moving in a circle? The one with the V or the one with the T in it? And which one was that? Yeah, 
in this one, the M cancels. The little M, sorry, cancels. And in this one, one of the R's cancel. Yeah, I've seen this one before. If I recall, V orb is square root of big G, big M over R. Did I leave you two whole pages to do this? I didn't. Okay. We're going to get crowded here, but I should have left two pages. Write small. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. And our final orbital radius is 2.55 times 10 to the 7th. Anything? No. 2.55 square root of that. Do you get 3,950? Yep. You know what? I might not ask you the first question. Matt, what am I asking you to find in part two? I might go straight to that because how do I calculate kinetic energy, Matt? And so if I want the kinetic energy in orbit, which V am I going to want? V. Yep. Can you see how I could ask you part two without asking you part one and just I'd expect you, I think it's fair game, to clue in. You're going to have to walk through that first. So it's going to be 0.5, which M, planet or satellite? Satellite, the thing that's moving. And I'll write 3950 squared, but you know I'm going to use my answer button. 0. 0.5 times 12,500 times answer button squared. How many joules of kinetic energy will I need? That many joules of kinetic energy. Where is that energy going to come from? Rocket fuel. So if I knew how many joules per liter of rocket fuel, I, I could figure out how many liters of rocket fuel I need. Uh, 9.78. I'm going to write this down because I have a feeling I'm going to use this in a second. I'm going to go 9.7761 times 10 to the, was it 9th or 10th? 10. And then I'll write it to two sig figs or three sig figs, 9.78 times 10 to the 10th, and I'll make sure I put units. So there's the answer that I'll give, but I'll store that other one just in case. Lyndon, what's part three you want me to find? I know you were away, but don't worry. What part three you want me to find? Where? Okay, potential energy. Now, I know I'm in orbit, but I'm not going to start out writing gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. I'm going to start out with our cosmic potential energy. It's going to be potential energy is equal to negative big G, big M, little m over R. And I'm going to argue that uh, if I'm in orbit, I want R orbit. Here, the little m does not cancel. But I think I know everything. I, I'm going to go straight to plug and chug. It's going to be negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th, 12,500. Is that what it was, 12,500 kilograms? Divided by our orb, 2.55 times 10 to the 7th. Okay. negative 6.67 negative 11 times 5.98 24 times 12,500 divided by 2.55 negative? yeah, negative, that's okay I'm going to write negative 1.9552 
times 10 to the 11th, and now I'll write it to 3 sig figs. Negative 1.96 times 10 to the 11th joules. I don't like that negative, Mr. Duick. I'll explain what it means in a second, but it's definitely there. We're okay. And what's part four want me to find? Total energy. How do you think I'd find total energy in orbit? Linden. Yeah, add them up. Okay. So, I'm, uh, what would be a good abbreviation for total energy? T E. Total energy is going to be the PE plus the KE. This is why I carried some extra sig figs. So it's going to be 9.7761 scientific notation button 10 plus... Oh, you know what? I have this stored on my calculator, so I can just go plus answer button. You get a negative answer. That's the total energy. This is going to seem weird. How can the total energy be negative? Because if I wanted to get out to the edge of the universe, wouldn't I have to add more rocket fuel? And the edge of the universe is zero, so I better be starting out less than that. I would have to do work to reach zero. So this negative, although it's a little intimidating, actually, no, relative to zero at infinity, now that I think about it, it's predictable. Yeah, i got a negative amount of energy right now. Do it. Yeah. I can't help noticing that when I found the kinetic energy and I found the total energy, these two numbers look a lot alike. Okay. Is there a fifth thing, Caleb? What? Oh, there's six things. Wow. PE at launch. I think that's going to be PE initial, which is going to be negative big G, big M, little m over R initial. Now, if you've listened to me about getting a good calculator, if you're lucky, your calculator might let you go back several lines. So my calculator lets me go back to this line right here, which has, which I typed a couple of lines ago. This has everything that I want, except I just want to change the radius. So if you're lucky, if you can go a few lines back, you can often save yourself some typing because that 6.67 times 10 to the 11 shows up in like every equation. And if we're around the Earth, the mass of the Earth will show up in every equation. It's a little easier. Or you can type it from scratch. So it's going to be negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th, 12,500 divided by, Caleb, our initial is not zero, it's radius of the earth. And that's why I was able to say, you know what, if I just backspace and edit a couple of questions ago, it's less typing, and I get, we started out with negative 7.81, Five times ten to the eleventh. Let's write that on the next line, Mr. Duke. Negative seven point eight one five times ten to the eleventh joules. Last thing, Braden, what do we want me to find? Work is going to be change in potential plus change in kinetic. I'm running out of room, so I'm going to go straight to saying potential energy final minus potential energy initial plus kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. There's my change in potential. Final minus initial. My change in kinetic. Final minus initial and my initial is zero. 
Do I have all those numbers in boxes somewhere up there? I think I do. So just be really, really cautious in your typing. We can figure this out. Potential energy final. Was that negative 1.96? 1.9552. Times 10 to the 11th minus potential energy initial. I have that stored on my calculator, so I could just use my answer button. Plus kinetic energy, which was 9.776. Scientific. Is that right? Have I got the numbers right? Yeah. Should I get a positive answer here or a negative answer? Am I having to burn rocket fuel and do work to get into orbit? So I should get a positive answer here. This is why I said don't let your steps freak you out along the way. I, hey, I do get a positive answer. How much rocket fuel is it? How much energy? How much work? 6.84 times 10 to the 11th. Is that right? I still got to get through. We did watch how to fly a spaceship to the space station. I'm not going to give you new homework from here just yet because I need to finish a lot of this. Instead, I'm going to preview a video that I was going to show you a bit later. I have mentioned there is an asteroid that may hit us in 2034. 